but by far the most important of the overseas engagements carried out by our present King and Queen was the world tour they made in 1927. They were seen off by the Prince of Wales, the Duke of Gloucester and Prince George when they joined HMS Renown at Portsmouth. The Prince of Wales was in familiar surroundings. He had himself only recently returned from an extensive overseas tour in the famous battle cruiser. She was hardly unfamiliar to our present King either, for he must often have seen her ahead of the battle fleet during his period of naval service from 1915 to 1917. For this historic journey, the Renown had been specially painted in white enamel. With the destroyer as escort, the Renown leaves Portsmouth Harbour on her journey to Australasia. In due course, she reaches the Atlantic entrance to the Panama Canal. And no doubt all aboard are surprised to learn the curious fact that the Atlantic entrance to the Panama is west of the Pacific entrance. The royal passengers are greeted by the American authorities as the ship passes through the canal. The Renown has to negotiate a series of locks because there is a 14-foot difference in level between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. A few days later, the royal couple arrived at Wellington, New Zealand in extremely wet weather. But later, the tour was graced with brilliant sunshine. Here they are being greeted by thousands of children in mass formation. As part of their visit to New Zealand, the Duke and Duchess were taken to the world famous Giza Valley at Rotorua. Here they are being made chieftains of a Maori tribe and later they watch the mystic symbolism of the Maori dancing. Almost the last act of his tour of New Zealand, at Auckland, before embarking for Australia, our present king unveils a statue to his father, King George V. From New Zealand, the renown carried them to Sydney. In the famous harbour, they come ashore through long lines of gaily decorated small boats. At the landing stage, Australia gives its official welcome to the Royal Duke, sent by King George V to open the new Parliament buildings at Canberra, capital of the Commonwealth. The elaborate programme of events included a great inspection of ex-servicemen. From Australia, the Renown heads homewards via Mauritius, the Suez Canal and Malta. Disembarking on the famous South Railway jetty at Portsmouth, they are welcomed by the Prince of Wales, the Duke of Gloucester and Prince George. And soon they are on the final stage of their journey to London. The capital greets them with a typically English rainy day, but also with a royal welcome. And looking up again towards the famous balcony at Buckingham Palace, the cheering thousands share with our present queen her joy that after a journey round the world, she is once more holding her baby girl in her arms. As we near the end of this brief sketch in word and picture of the national activities of the Royal House of Windsor, we feel that our story would be incomplete without some indication of the part played by other members of the Royal House. Her Majesty Queen Mary will always enjoy to a special degree the affection of the British people. Since the day she became the bride of our present King's father, she has identified herself with every form of social welfare work. Nor have her interests ended there. For in the course of an exceptionally busy life, she has found time to be a patron of art and industry and to join in the nation's sporting life. Her Majesty has just opened a new hostel for girls at Hoxton, and here she is on a visit to her own hospital at Stratford. A delightful picture of Her Majesty at a play centre at Bethnal Green.
Her Majesty is interested in tennis, and here at Wimbledon with the Duke of Kent, she watches Mrs. Helen Wills Moody. Here is a picture of the Princess Royal, King George VI's only sister. She has done an immense amount of valuable work for the Girl Guide movement and for other women's and girls' organisations. His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester, inspecting his regiment at Aldershot. Formerly in the 10th Hussars, the Duke gave up his army career some months ago that he might have more time to help the King in carrying out official and state duties. In 1935, the Duke was married to Lady Alice Scott, and here they are in the hunting field. A London society wedding brings charming pictures of the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester with the Duke and Duchess of Kent. On this occasion, the Duke of Kent, the King's youngest brother, is reviewing 30,000 lads of the Boys' Brigade in Glasgow, where the movement started. His Majesty desires me to express his best wishes for the continued welfare and prosperity of the Boys' Brigade. And last, we present one of the most charming, moving pictures ever made of any member of the royal family, or for that matter, of any family. Need I tell you that the Duke and Duchess of Kent are assisting Prince Edward to make his debut as a film star, and he registers every emotion from extreme boredom to quiet amusement. As 1937 unrolls its course, the peoples of the empire join together in defense of freedom. And as a symbol of their unity, all eyes and thoughts are turned towards this son of the House of Windsor. Blessed and comforted by priceless gifts, a loving and devoted wife, and two charming children, he has dedicated his life to the service of his peoples. May God bless them.